Hi, this is the fourth lesson in electricity, uh, mainly focused on Edexcel, Cambridge, and International Baccalaureate syllabuses. Uh, the link for the first three lessons are given in the description part. You can go through it. Uh, and a short notes uh, for this lesson is also given in the description part. Uh, you can download the notes if you like. Okay, so in this uh, lesson, I mainly focus on uh, circuits, right? Before starting circuits, we should know a law called Kirchhoff's law. There are two different laws, uh, Kirchhoff's first law and Kirchhoff's second law. Okay, what Kirchhoff's first law says? Okay, Kirchhoff's first law uh, states about the conservation of charges. That means on a network at a junction, the total amount of charge approaching the junction per second, that is the current flow, is it? Rate of flow of charge is the current flow when we consider one second. So the total amount of charge approaching a junction per second must be equal to total amount of charges leaving the junction per second. Okay, so I can draw a junction like this. The total amount of charge approaching the junction per second is the current flow. So the current approaching the junction is I1, I3 and I4. The current leaving the junction is I2 and I5. So the total current approaching the junction must be equal to total current leaving the junction. The reason charges cannot be created or destroyed. So uh, the charges should be conserved. So here I can say I1 plus I3, I1 plus I3 plus I4 equal to I2 plus I2 plus I5. That is the Kirchhoff's first law. Very useful when we are doing parallel circuits and at the junctions we use this one. Okay, the Kirchhoff's second law is about the conservation of energy, conservation of power or conservation of energy. That means I already told that the electromotive force is defined as the total work done in one coulomb well, total work done in moving one coulomb charge through one complete circuit. So the total work done by the power supply when moving one coulomb charge through one complete circuit is EMF, right? So the work done to move one coulomb charge through the bulb is V3, through the resistor is V2 and the work done to move one coulomb charge through the motor, electric motor is V1, right? So here you can see according to the law of conservation of energy, total work done by the power supply is equal to sum of the work done across the components when one coulomb charge flowed through them. So that means I can say in a closed circuit, that should be considered in a closed circuit, the total EMF must be equal to sum of the voltages across the components. So in a closed circuit, total EMF must be equal to sum of the voltages across the components. So in this closed circuit, EMF is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. That is the Kirchhoff's second law. Okay, so mainly in this lesson, we are going to learn about uh, circuits. So when there are more than two components, <clears throat> how can we connect them? Either we can connect them either in series or parallel. Okay, before that, you should know that uh, current flow in a circuit is decided by the EMF of the power supply and the total resistance or the resistance of the components. The current flow is not decided by the function of the components. So in circuits, we don't consider whether it's a bulb or motor or whether it's a heater or whatever it is, we don't consider. We consider their resistance. Remember that we never consider the function of the components when we are calculating current, when we are uh, calculating the total resistance, we never consider the functions of the components. We consider only their resistance because resistance and the EMF decides the current flow, not the function of the components. Okay, so when there are components, more than one components, well, how can we connect those components among them? So they could be connected either in parallel among them or series among them. So when they are connected in parallel among them, that circuit is sometimes called parallel circuit. Circuit is not parallel. The components are connected in parallel among them. 
Same way, when the components are connected in series among them, that is called series circuit. Sometimes, not all books, some books they call it as series connection, parallel connection. So, connection is not series or parallel. The components are connected among them either in parallel or in series and we consider only their resistance not the function okay how to identify when we have two components they are connected with each other how can we decide whether they are connected in parallel or series okay there are some rules to identify whether they are connected in parallel or series i'll start with parallel how can i decide okay these two components are connected in parallel among them okay so see the first diagram actually here you can see a bulb a resistor or heater same notation this is the electric motor now when i see these two components bulb and the resistor you can see that all components have two terminals except transistor but transistor is not in your syllabus transistor has three terminals but in anyway, it is not in your syllabus so all the components in your syllabus we are dealing with two terminals right so when we consider the bulb and the resistor they have two terminals now see the terminals of the bulb is directly connected to a junction junction means you know junction of a road there will be many branches is it so there will be many branches from a junction you can see the bulb is directly connected to the junction x and y junction means you can see from that there are many branches there are many branches same way from y there are three branches here also there are three branches i can draw more branches also so i drew only three branches right so you can see the bulb is directly connected to the junction the resistor also directly connected to the junction same way the electric motor also directly connected to the junction so when you think about the bulb and the junction there are no other components between this terminal and the junction there are no other terminals directly the y is connected to the junction y and the other terminal of the bulb is directly connected to the junction x when you consider the resistor here the two terminals are directly connected. I'm using the word directly. Carefully notice that. Directly connected to the junction. Same way here also in electric motor, the two terminals are directly connected to the junction. So when there are more than one components connected among them like this, if they are directly connected to the junction, then we say those components are connected in parallel among them. Understand? So, for example, if there's another component, something like this, there's another bulb I can call B2, then I can't say, then I can't say the bulb, this one, if I name this bulb B1, then I can't say B1 and R2 are connected in parallel is a wrong statement because the terminals of the bulb is not directly connected to the junction, it's directly connected to the junction here one terminal is directly connected to this junction and the other terminal is connected to the bulb b2 not to the terminal not to the junction y so i can't say b1 and r2 this resistor and the bulb b1 are in parallel is a wrong statement okay so if you want to say two components are connected in parallel they must be directly connected across two junctions then only we can say they are connected in parallel among them. So here all these three components, bulb, resistor and the electric motor, they are directly connected to the junctions X and Y. Therefore, they are connected in parallel among them. Okay, so how can we decide two components are connected in series? Okay, now look at here. When you think about this bulb and the resistor, there are no junction or branches between the bulb and the resistor. The bulb and the resistor are directly connected with each other. Can you see that? They are directly connected with each other. There are no junction or branch between the two components. Okay. So I can say bulb and resistor are connected in series. So when you say two components are connected in series, between them there won't be any junction or branches same way when you consider this and this how are they connected 
there is no component between them there is no junction or branch between them so r2 and this uh, electric motor they are connected in series there is no junction no branch so uh, this electrical resistor and the electric motor they are connected in series they are connected in series no junction no branch they are connected in series no junction no branch so i can say all these three are connected in series among them so simply we can identify if there are no junction branch between two components they are connected in series if two components are directly connected across two junctions then they are connected in parallel among them remember that's very important you must be able to identify when you see two components how are they connected okay that's very important i hope you understood how to identify whether two components are connected in series or parallel okay so here i'm going to get an equivalent resistance what do you mean by equivalent resistance say for example here these three components are connected in parallel among them i already explained how to identify whether they are series or parallel so they are directly connected across two junctions x and y and i told that the current flow is decided by the resistance not by the function right okay so here you can see uh, normally we take these connecting wires they don't have any resistance so wires have no resistance means at all points the potential will be the same say for example if i consider two points in this wire this point and this point what is the potential difference between these two wires uh, p1 and p2 if you ask me the potential difference between these two wires will be equal to zero there's no potential difference between two wires because there is no resistance v equal ir so there is current flow but the resistance between these two points is equal to zero in the wire. So R equals zero means potential difference is equal to zero. So then you can ask me how the electrons are flowing, the potential difference zero. Potential difference is zero between any two points on the wire. But when we consider the potential across the terminals of the power supply, there will be potential difference. So because of the potential difference across the terminals, there is current flow right but when you think about two points on a wire there is no potential difference because we take the resistance of the wires zero but practically there will be small resistance but in your syllabus we normally take wires have no resistance in circuit so when we had so two points on a wire there is no potential difference that will be equal to zero right so the potential across the terminals x and y so there is no potential difference across any two points of the wire so potential across x and y that means if i connect a voltmeter across x and y or if i slightly move the terminals of the voltmeter here it will read the same value because this wire whether i am connecting the voltmeter to point y and x or this point and this point if i am connecting the voltmeter to this point and this point the reading will be the same because this portion of the wire will not change the reading of the voltmeter because that portion of the wire has no resistance so i can say voltage across the junction x y will be same as even if i connect here or even if i connect the two terminals imagine these are the two fingers i assume as the two terminals of the voltmeter so if i connect the voltmeter across x and y or here or here the reading will be the same or here reading will be the same reading will be the same finally the reading will be the same that will be the voltage across the power supply that is the electromotive force so i can say simply the voltage across the junction x y will be same as the voltage across the terminals of the power supply that is the emf same way now look at here if i connect the voltage voltmeter across x and y that is same as voltage across the emf voltage of the power supply which is emf and see here if i move the terminals of the voltmeter even slightly little more here the reading same reading same reading same so voltage across the bulb is same as voltage across the junction so voltage of the bulb is same as voltage across the junction that will be same as the voltage across the power supply same way voltage across the resistor same as voltage across the junction 
voltage across the electric motor also same as voltage across the junction so these three components are directly connected across the junction so voltage across the bulb is same as the voltage across the junction same way voltage across the resistor also same as voltage across the junction voltage across the electric motor is also voltage across the junction but in this circuit voltage across the junction is equal to emf of the power supply i hope you understood because these wires have no resistance so whether we connect the voltmeter here or slightly here or here the reading will be the same there is no change in voltage because of the wire wire has no resistance okay so these three components are connected in parallel and the voltage across them will be same as voltage across the junction xy so if i say voltage across the junction v xy that will be the voltage across the bulb that will be the voltage across the resistor and that will be the voltage across the motor but in this circuit voltage across the junction is same as the emf okay right so the current flow in this circuit we know that current comes out of the positive terminal actually the electrons are flowing out of the negative terminal but you know um, conventional sign the direction of the current flow is taken as opposite to the flow of direction of electrons so the current is flowing this direction so the current comes here will divide into three parts because of the Kirchhoff's first law so current through this one is I1, through this one is I2, through this is I3, right? So that's the way current will divide. Higher the resistance, lower the current, right? Now, what is equivalent resistance? Okay, I told that earlier, we never deal with the function. We consider only the resistance of the components, not the function of the components. So we know that they are, these three are different type of components. They have different functions, but the current flow I is decided by their resistance. Now, equivalent resistance means if I remove all these three components and across the junction, imagine if I remove all these three from the circuit and across the junction, if I can connect a, a resistor R, and when I connect the resistor R across the junction XY, when I connect it, if I get the same current I, the current which is coming out of the power supply is I. So when I remove all these three from the circuit and across XY, when I connect a resistor R, if I get the same current I, then I can call this R is equivalent resistance of these three components. Understand, there's a meaning of equivalent resistance. So don't say this resistor will have the functions of them. No, they don't, it, they don't have the same function as this one. They are the completely different functions. But we consider the resistance. If I remove all these three components, and if, when I connect a resistor R across XY, the same power supply, if I get the same current as here, then I can call this resistance R is equivalent to the total resistance, equivalent to total resistance. So total does not mean just adding. We are going to get a different uh, format, but I can say this resistance R is equivalent to the equivalent resistance of equivalent resistance of these components. So what's the relationship between R and R1, R2, R3? How can I get a relationship? Okay, I'm going to derive the relationship now. Okay, so I already told that voltage across the bulb is same as the voltage across the junction. That is same as the EMF. So I can use V equal IR for the bulb, right? If I use V equal IR for the bulb, the voltage across the bulb is the voltage across the junction that is same as the voltage across the terminals of the power supply which is EMF. So V will be EMF for the bulb, current through that is I1, R1 is the resistance of the bulb, so I will be EMF over R1. Same way for the resistor if I write, for the resistor, I can say the voltage across it same as xy that is equal to emf voltage across this one is emf 
current is I2 times R2. So I2 will be EMF over R2. Okay, same for, for the motor if I write. If I consider for the motor what will happen, same way I can write I3 will be the voltage across the motor also, same as voltage across the junction, that is the EMF. So I3 will be EMF over R3. Okay. I know, I call it the Kirchhoff's first law, I equal I1 plus I2 plus I3. So I equal I1 plus I2 plus I3. Right. Now, when I consider the equivalent resistance, that means a resistor which is connected across junction after removing that, and I'm getting the same current there. Then that's the reason I call this as equivalent resistance of these three. So when I consider this circuit, equivalent circuit, where the current flow is I, the resistance is R. So here I can say the equal IR if I use for this equivalent resistance. I can say the voltage across it is EMF. If I connect a voltmeter across it, that will be same as the EMF. So equal to I times R. So I is equal to EMF over R. I can call this equation 2, this one equation 1. Okay, when you consider equation 1 and 2, the left side is I, I, same. Therefore, the right sides must be same. So when I consider these two equations, right side EMF over R equal Instead of I1, I can substitute EMF over R1. Instead of I2, I can substitute EMF over R2. Same way EMF over R3. So all the EMF will get cancelled. Finally, 1 over R equal 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So here R is the equivalent resistance and R1, R2, R3 are connected in parallel among them. So the equivalent resistance of these three components, they have resistance R1, R2, R3. So the equivalent resistance will be equal to 1 over R equal 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So this is called equivalent resistance of the parallel uh, connection. You can ask him, so if I don't consider this one, if I want to find the equivalent resistance of bulb and the resistor, okay, then you can say 1 over R equal 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 because they are connected in parallel. So I don't need to consider always the total equivalent resistance. I can consider just two components and I can find the equivalent resistance of those two components. So, or you can, you might need to find the equivalent resistance of only the bulb and motor. Some reason you are finding the equivalent resistance of bulb and motor, then we can say the equivalent resistance of bulb and motor is equal to 1 over R. Okay, 1 over R is the equivalent resistance of bulb and motor that is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R3. Like that, I can find the equivalent resistance of any two or more than two components, those are connected in parallel among them. Okay, so we'll do an example. Uh, a bulb and a resistor, they are connected in parallel with the power supply. The resistance of the bulb is 20 ohms. Resistance of the resistor is 10 ohms. Find the equivalent resistance. So we can find like this equivalent resistance of these components or find the uh, total resistance of the circuit. Both refers the same, right? So I can say 1 over R equal they are connected in parallel because they are directly connected to the junctions. 1 over R equal 1 over 20 plus 1 over 10. Find the R. You know how to find it. Find the R. So you will see R equal 6.67 ohms. Okay, now look at here. The resistance of the bulb is 20. This is 10. You can see the equivalent resistance is lower than the lowest of these two components, those are connected in parallel. So you can see that is 6.67, that is lower than the lowest. Among them, the lowest is 10 ohms, say 20 and 10. 
So 10 is the lowest among these two resistors, but the equivalent will be lower than the lowest in the component. Okay, so that is one of the conclusion we can say when components are connected in parallel among them, the equivalent resistance will become lower than the lowest resistance in the component, uh, lowest resistance in the uh, series connection, uh, sorry, parallel connection, right? So the equivalent resistance will be lower than the lowest. Okay, if I connect one more resistance in parallel, say for example, I'm going to connect another resistor, say something like uh, I'm connecting a motor which has resistance 30 ohms. What will happen to the equivalent resistance now? So now the equivalent resistance 1 over R equal 1 over 20 plus 1 over 30 plus 1 over 10. Find the equivalent of it. You will get another conclusion from this. Okay, you will get 5.45 ohms. See, when I add another component that has resistance 30 ohms that also in parallel with the earlier two components by band resistor now the equivalent resistance of the three components or the total resistance of the circuit is dropping further earlier it was 6.67 now it has become 5.45 so i can give the second conclusion about the uh, connection parallel connection that is, when more and more components are connected in parallel, the equivalent resistance will decrease further and further. Understand? So, uh, two conclusions I can say. When components are connected in parallel among them, the equivalent resistance will be lower than the lowest resistance of the components in parallel. The second conclusion I can say, when more and more components are connected in parallel, the equivalent resistance will decrease further and further. Why the equivalent resistance is decreasing further and further? If I connect one more resistance here, those who are interested can try something like that. Connect another resistor in parallel here, uh, something like this, I draw a line, something like this, another resistance in parallel, connect it something like another bulb which has a resistance 100 ohms, whatever it is, you will get lower than this one. So why is it like that? The reason is when I add more and more components in parallel, the path for the current flow is increasing. Now earlier, when I had only two components, the path for the current, only two it current which comes here, the electrons, they can flow only through these two paths. When I add the next one, I'm increasing the path for the current to flow or for the electron to flow. So when I increase the path, more electrons can come from here, no? from the power supply. It can pump more electrons per second. So more path means more electrons can be pumped out from the uh, power supply means rate of flow of electrons from the power supply will increase. That means current will increase. So current from the power supply increasing means the equivalent resistance of the circuit is decreasing. That's the reason for a decrease in equivalent resistance when more and more components are connected in parallel. Okay, just a simple question, example. Uh, power supply which has EMF 12 volt. EMF 12 volt means that's the voltage across its terminals. 12 volt is connected across two components. They are connected in parallel among them because they are directly connected across the junctions. So the bulb, current through the bulb is 0 0.6 amperes and the current from the power supply is 1.5 ampere. Current from the power supply is 1.5 ampere. So first part, find the resistance of the bulb. So we know that we normally take these connecting resistors have no resistance. So voltage across the bulb is same as the voltage across the junction because no voltage, if I consider two points on the wire, the voltage across the two points on the wire will be zero because they have no resistance. So voltage across the bulb, if I connect a voltmeter here, the reading what it shows is same as the voltage across the junction, that is same as the voltage across the power supply. So I can say voltage across the bulb in this circuit is equal to 12 volt, that is EMF. So I can use V equal IR for the bulb. So voltage across the bulb is 12. Current flow through the bulb is given 0 0.6 amperes times R1. I'll call the resistance of the bulb R1. 
So R1 will be equal to 12 divided by 0 0.6, that is 20 ohms. Second part, find the current through the resistor R. So there's a resistor or heater R. Okay, we know I call it Kirchhoff's first law. This current will split through this one and this one. I can call this current I2. So I can say 0 0.6 plus I2 is equal to 1.5. So I2 is equal to 0 0.9 amperes. That's the current through the resistor R. See, I am not using 1 no R equal 1 no R and 1 no R. Not necessary. If necessary, you only use that equation, right? Otherwise, I can solve the questions without using the equivalent resistance equation 1 no R equal 1 no R and plus 1 no R2. If necessary, I will use it, but so far I don't need that, right? Third one also, find the resistance R. So that also, I'm not going to use it. Third one, find the resistance R. So I know the current through the resistance R that I found it, 0 0.9. The voltage across R also same as the voltage across the junction that is 12 volt. So I can use V equal I R for the resistor. So voltage across it is 12. Current through that is 0 0.9 into R. Find R 12 divided by 0 0.9. Uh, you will get 40 over 3, that is 13.33 ohms. Right. Now, if you want to use, if you like to use 1 over R format, okay, some students, they do like this. So, you note down the final answer, 13.33. To find the final answer, can't I use 1 over R equal 1 over R1, 1 over R2, that format? Yes, you can use, right. How to use it? Now, look at here. I do that way also. I'll get the same answer, this one. So you can see that uh, the current flow from the power supply is 1.5. The EMF of the power supply is 12. So I can imagine the circuit like this. So this is the power supply, 12 volt. And the equivalent resistance of the bulb and this one, the resistor R, if I say these are the junctions X and Y, so I can imagine across the junction X and Y, an equivalent resistance R naught is connected. Okay. Right. So current flow through R naught will be 1.5 amperes. 1.5 amperes is the current flow through the equivalent resistance R naught. I am going to find the R naught. That will be actually the third. What I did is easy method, right? But anyway, I am doing the same thing again by using 1 no R equal 1 no R1, 1 no R2 format, right? Okay, so I'll find the equivalent resistance. The voltage across R0 is, you know, if I connect a voltmeter, that it is same as 12 volt. So V equal IR, I'm going to use for the equivalent resistance. Voltage is 12, current is 1.5 into R0. Find the R0. So R0 will be 12 divided by 1.5, you will get 8. 8 is the equivalent resistance of these two components. Now I can say 1 over R0 equal 1 over R1 plus 1 over R. I can call it as R2 if I want. I can call it as R. I'll just put it 1 over R. 1 over R0 is 1 over 8 equal 1 over R1. We found the R1 in the first part that is 20 ohms. 1 over 20 plus 1 over. You can see this is long a step, but anyway, I can find it. Find the R from here. 1 over 8 minus 1 over 20, then solve it and take the reciprocal. You will get the same answer as what we got earlier for the third part. You will get 13.33 here also. So the answer is the same, but what I did in the previous method is easier method, is it? Right. So that means uh, it's not necessary to use 1 over R equal 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 that format every time. Depending on the question, depending on the need, we will use it. Sometimes uh, without using that equation, we will be able to find the uh, required unknown, uh, unknown things in the uh, question, right? 
Okay, so here I'm going to get a uh, relationship for the equivalent resistance of components when they are connected in series to their e uh, individual resistances. Say, for example, here the bulb, resistor, motor, they are connected in series. How do I know they are connected in series? There are no junction or branch between these two. So that means this and this are connected in series. Same way when I consider these two, there is no junction or branch. So they, these two are connected in series. Okay, so the resistance of this one is R1, resistance of this R2, R3, motor, the resistance. So they will have the same current because current has no chance of uh, dividing anywhere. So the same current will flow through all the three components. Uh, since they have different resistance, they will have different voltage across them. V equal IR, I is the same, but R are different. So the V1, V2, V3 will be different. If they have the same resistance, they will have the same voltage across them. When you think about the Kirchhoff's second law, V1 plus V2 plus V3 must be equal to EMF. Okay, so equivalent resistance of these three components i told the current flow is decided by the resistance not by the function so when i think about the equivalent resistance of these three components now i can replace these three components by a resistor which has resistance r when i connect it to the same power supply if i connect the same current i here that means I can say this resistance is equivalent to resistance of R1, R2 and R3 together, right? So what's the relationship between this R and each of uh, these individual uh, resistances? Okay, we are going to find it now, the relationship. So I can say V1 is equal to IR1 if I use V equal IR for the bulb. For this one, if I use, I can say V2 is equal to IR2. Same way V3 is equal to IR3. I know that according to Kirchhoff's second law, if I use Kirchhoff's second law, I can say V1 plus V2 plus V3 equal to EMF. So in so V1, I can say IR1. In so V2, IR2 plus I. R3 equal to EMF. Let it be first equation. Now, when I think about the equivalent resistance, I told the meaning of equivalent resistance. So, the voltage across the equivalent resistance will be EMF. Current flow is same as this current. Then only I can call this resistance as equivalent to total of them. So, here if I use V equal IR for the equivalent resistance, V equal IR. So V equal IR, I'm going to use for the equivalent resistance. Voltage across the equivalent resistance is EMF, current I into R. Second equation. Now compare these two equations. The Both equations have EMF, EMF. These two are the same. I can write other way if you want. EMF is IR is equal to E. I take this as the equation 2. So you can see when you consider these two equations, EMF, EMF is the same. So right hand side same means left hand side should be the same. So that means IR equal IR1 plus IR2 plus IR3. All the I will get cancelled. So R equal R1 plus R2 plus R3. So when components are connected in series, they will be just added. That will give the equivalent resistance. So you know that when you are just adding, the equivalent resistance will become more than any of these resistors. But in parallel circuit, the other way, the equivalent resistance will be lower than the lowest resistance of the circuit. But here, the equivalent resistance will be just addition. So it will be more than the resistance of any of these uh, resistors, any of these resistors. Okay, just we'll do a simple question again. Okay, so this is a simple circuit, a power supply which has EMF 16 volt is connected to a bulb of resistance 10 ohm, motor of resistance 16 ohm, and a resistor of 20 ohms. So the first part, how are they? The bulb and the motor, bulb and motor are connected in series or parallel. How are they connected? How to find it? Are they connected in series? or 
are they connected in parallel so most of the students they uh, tell they are connected in series because they say they are connected on one line right we'll see whether they are connected in series or parallel okay when you think about the motor sorry motor and the bulb are they connected in series no they are not in series because there's a junction you can see there's a branch and a junction so from i can imagine this junction i can name it x so when you see the x from that x there's a branch is there so that means they are not in series so i told that if you say two components are in series there should not be any junction or branch between those two components there's a junction and a branch from that junction between bulb and the motor therefore bulb and motor are not connected in series so they are not in series okay so are they connected in parallel what's the condition to say they are in parallel they should be directly connected across the junctions you can see this is a junction and there is another junction here you can see why okay so the bulb then you consider one terminal of the bulb is directly connected to the junction the other terminal is connected to the power supply not to the junction y but when you think about the motor it's one terminal is connected to the junction x the other one is also connected to the next junction so i can say the motor is directly connected across the junction x and junction y but the bulb only one terminal is connected to the junction s not the other terminal the other terminal is connected to the bulb uh, power supply so motor and the bulb are not in parallel if they want to be in parallel for both of them they are both terminals must be connected across the same junction directly but here bulb is connected to junction x but the other terminal to the power supply therefore bulb and motor they are not in parallel also so how are they connected that has no a uh, proper name or anything they are neither they are not connected in series and not connected in parallel so i can't solve these two components first i can't use r equal r1 plus r2 no i can't use it or i can't use 1 no r equal 1 no r1 1 no r2 for these two resistors because they are not in series not in parallel okay so now we'll see this uh, circuit again how are they connected bulb and the 20 ohm resistor are they connected in series or parallel again the same argument you can see when you consider bulb and the 20 ohm resistor there's a junction from that junction there's a branch going to motor so they are not in series if they are connected in series there should not be any junction or branch between those two components so they are not in series okay are they connected in parallel then okay the 20 ohm resistor is directly connected across x and y x and y are the two junctions again the bulb one terminal is connected to x but the other one is not connected to y so bulb and 20 ohm resistor are not in parallel also so they are not in series not in parallel so i can't solve these two resistors directly first okay so because they are not in series not in parallel we don't have any equation for uh, such situation okay now the same circuit again there are the third question i can say how motor and the 20 ohm resistor how are they connected now you can see that motor you can see directly the two terminals of the motor directly connected to junction x and junction y so the y is bending but this wire is directly there is no component here so the next terminal of the motor is directly connected to y so motor is directly connected across x and y when you see the 20 ohm resistor that also directly connected across x and y therefore the 20 ohm resistor and the motor are directly connected in parallel they are connected in parallel okay so i can solve and find the equivalent resistance of 20 ohms and 16 ohms by using 1 over r equal 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 so next question is 
they can ask you to find the equivalent resistance of this circuit. So we found it. These two are connected in parallel among them, right? So since they are connected in parallel, I can use the equation 1 over R equal 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 format, right? So the fourth question is find the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Fourth part, find the total resistance or find the resistance of the circuit. Okay, how can I find it? First, I consider these two. They are connected in parallel. So, I can use 1 over R equal 1 over uh, 20 plus 1 over 16. Find the R. So, that will be 8.89 ohms. Where should I connect the equal and resistance of these two? I should connect it across the junction. So I can redraw the same circuit like this. So I told that we never consider the function. We are going to find the total resistance of the circuit. That's all. So I am going to replace these two resistances, 20 and 16, by 8.8. And where should I connect it? It must be connected across the junction. I told that when I was deriving the equivalent resistance. The equivalent resistance should be connected across the junction, right? So I can replace this like this way. So the bulb is still there. Its resistance is 10 ohms. And this is the X. So across the X, I'm connecting the imagine. Actually, I'm not connecting. I imagine that I'm connecting the equivalent resistance 8.89 ohm. And this is the junction Y. So these two are replaced. The resistance of these two, actually the Components are not replaced. I imagine the equivalent resistance of these two are connected 8.89 here. Now you can see this 8.89 and 10 ohm. How are they connected? They are in series. You can see there is no junction or branch between the bulb and the equivalent resistance of these two. I connected across the junction. There is no junction or branch. So they are connected in series. Right, so I solved these two and I got the equivalent resistance this much. So the equivalent of the bulb and this one, now I can say the final resistance, the total resistance of the circuit R0 is equal to, they are connected in series, so that will be just added R1 plus R2. So 10 plus 8.89, that will be 18.89 ohms, that is the equivalent resistance of the circuit okay so we found the equivalent resistance of the circuit now okay so i can find the current through the power supply by using equivalent resistance so like that i will do more uh, challenging questions uh, in my next uh, lesson that is uh, lesson five okay in my fifth lesson i will do more questions uh, how to find the current through uh, each and every components, how to find the voltage, everything I'll do that uh, in the fifth lesson. Okay, so that's the end of fourth lesson. I'll continue that in the fifth lesson. Bye.